What's up guys, my name is David Suarez and today we are going to build a PC. So for the CPU, this is going to be all the specs of the PC are going to be in the beginning of the video. And uh, yeah, so this is an Intel Core i3-4160 processor. Great processor. This is a, a Intel processors are amazing. I love Intel for the price for performance. You're paying a high price, but you're getting the performance. And I, I AMD is fine as well. I just haven't used AMD as of yet. I probably will build. I want to build a test rig eventually, so I can test some things, and that will most likely be AMD. I have a generic ASUS or CD writer, CD ROM drive, whatever. Uh, I have a uh, MSI military class H81i Mini ITX motherboard. We have a 500 watt Corsair CX500M modular power supply. As this is a uh, mini ITX build, I do like to go modular just to keep the wire management under control. We have 8 gigabytes of Vengeance RAM. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet. And we have a 1 terabyte hard drive. Now for the case, we have an Obsidian Series 250D uh, mini ITX case. And it's a fantastic case. And we're going to dive right into building with setting up the motherboard. So let's begin. We have our uh, mini ITX board. This is the first time I'm opening this, truth be told. Uh, so let's dive right into it. So here is the motherboard. This is the MSI mini ITX board. Beautifully, beautiful, beautiful. Love this motherboard. Uh, it's great. So we'll go over the uh, I.O. in the back. Oh, God, this is bad way to hold it. <laughs> so for the rear of the board, we have a PS2 connector right there. So this is good for um, mice, keyboards, good, good connector. We have two uh, USB 2 connectors, a uh, VGA, DVI-I, I believe, not 100%, uh, HDMI, uh, unknown at the moment, can't remember what this is called. It looks like DisplayPort, but doubt that. We have Ethernet, and we have two USB 3, and we have your standard audio. So on the board itself, we have some other things. We have our USBs right here, our fan connector, some fan pins, the CPU fan, um, some heat distribution. We have two cutouts for the uh, RAM, one PCI. Uh, this is the 24-pin uh, connector for the uh, power supply right here. Uh, the CPU, obviously this is the CPU. And something really nice is the battery on the motherboard. So this is to, if um, well, this can go bad after a long, long time of use. But um, if the BIOS has problems, so you have to do a hard BIOS reset, it's kind of helpful that this is here. So you can kind of pull that out and reset the BIOS real, real easily. All right. So we're going to flip this around um, real quickly. Okay. So now we're going to be installing the uh, CPU. So I don't know if you really can see this very well. And I hope you can. I hope this focuses out pretty nicely. So on the CPU, we're going to take the CPU out of its shroud now. Um, on the CPU itself. There's these two little notches, and this is what I go by to installing the CPU. These two little notches right here on the corners. Oh, you can't see that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so these two little notches right here and on the other side as well. This is the guide we're going to be going by. And on the CPU itself, on the CPU socket, there's two little notches that correspond. So we're going to place the CPU nice and there, and now it's going to fit in beautifully. Now, rule of thumb is you really don't want to put pressure on this. You want to use... This, this is going to put the right pressure on the motherboard and the CPU. So we're going to press down nice and gently. Okay. We're going to do it again. And now we are installed. So very, very easy to install the CPU. Great installation. And we'll see how we actually did when we attempt to uh, boot the computer up. So, good, good, good. Next, we're going to install is the RAM. So, RAM, I think, is one of the easiest um, installations in a PC. Maybe even, uh, it's as simple. Everything in building a PC is very, very simple. So, this is the Crucial, uh, not Crucial, uh, Corsair Vengeance memory. Fantastic memory. I believe it's clocked at 1600, which is great memory. I just recently upgraded my own PC with uh, the black version of this for uh, eight, 16 gigabytes, so I know it's really good memory. So we're gonna open this up, if I can get my nail under there, come on. All right, there we go. All right. great. So now we have our be beautiful, lovely uh, 
four and four gigabyte models. So perfect for a uh, motherboard like this. Um, the reason why I didn't go for 16 is because for kind of a build like this, it's kind of overkill, I would say. And um, it is, uh, they said that this board really doesn't handle eight, uh, 16 that well. So I went with that review and said, okay, we'll do eight. So simple, simple, you just put it in, press, and it should click into place like that. Here, nice click on each side, and that's that. Apologize for any voice cracks because I am having an illness. I have cold. I have a cold. I said that weird. <laughs> um, I have a cold. So I'm um, getting over that finally. That's why I'm able to make this video today. Click. <clears throat> Click and come on. Oh, come on. Are you going to do it? Oh, hold on one moment. Try that again. Try that side first. And click. Beautiful. So now the Corsair RAM is installed and we're good. So um, next thing we'll do is the TP-Link wireless right here. Sorry for the blinding glare off that. So we'll open this up. And this is very, very easy. This is gonna be the only uh, PCI device we're gonna be using. So let's pull the cellophane off this. I've been using TP-Link ever since I started building PCs, which is about three years ago now. Built, put it in my friend's PC, put it in my own PC, put it in my uncle's PC, and now my grandmother's PC. So, I've been putting this in most PCs, and I might even start building PCs through something on my website. And, uh, I usually, I sometimes build Hackintoshes, but I'm not sure. I don't believe this machine is Hackintosh compatible, as the motherboard was not listed. But it's possible, as Hackintosh comp compatibility is not really that difficult. <clears throat> All you really need for Hackintosh comp compatibility is an Intel chipset, which we got, and um, a, uh, a usually a, usually a gigabyte motherboard. So usually the two requirements are the motherboards. So for my computer, I have a gigabyte motherboard, but I don't think we'll have any issue with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this. I think uh, this will work regardless in whatever slot. I never knew that. We don't have to click that up. So uh, we'll press that in. We can just click that back. It's not gonna be problem and there we go now we got PCI installed uh, eventually once I put this in the case itself I'm gonna put the stock fan just so I don't have to put too much pressure on the motherboard on this cardboard as because it could uh, hurt the pins underneath so uh, let's go right to our case now and I'll put the case on the table and uh, we'll start to insert so this is the Corsair case and I'll try to pull this up oh, oh, don't push the motherboard off the table that'd be a big no-no so this is the case Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Corsair case. I love Corsair cases. My computer down below is a Corsair case. Everything of Corsair is beautiful. This is a beautifully designed case with beautiful power switches, a reset button, um, USB 3 on the front. So I think this was about $100 for this case, or maybe even more, 120 So for what you're getting for the case, it is just absolutely beautiful. And I think this clicks. Ooh. I'm about to find out what that is. Oh, that's awesome. So this is something as well. That's very cool. I gotta give Corsair credit. I did not expect that. So the front is a shroud, but if you, I didn't have the, the focus right. So if you click the two corners right here and here, the front pops open to uh, show a beautiful, I believe that's a 16 millimeter uh, fan in there, which is absolutely cool. So props to Corsair, beautiful case. Has a nice even uh, clear on the top, which is awesome. All right, so we're back and we're about to sync the motherboard into the case. But one thing I really gotta give props to Corsair about, and I'll even lift the camera up and uh, we'll look in the case real quick, is right here, these are the motherboard standouts. And you put these in, screw them in, and usually they come separate. But Corsair, which I love when cases do this, they built them in. And good job for that. Here, thumbs up clearly right there. That's fantastic. I love when standouts are clearly placed it's really good so my tripod has been fully extended so we can kind of see a little bit better in the case I'm in front of my lighting so I might burn myself actually uh, let's turn myself around and we're gonna sink this baby in so how I'm gonna do this is very simply I believe I'm supposed to go this way we're about to find out aren't we I don't think I should have yes I should have no I'm right okay nice and easy we're gonna line up the I.O. right here, so the I.O. I'm going to pull through the I.O. 
I'm going to kind of just kind of eyeball it and line it up over the I.O. ports. So very, very nice for Corsair to do that. And uh, yeah, so this is how the motherboard's going to sit. Very, very nice. We have our PCI slots right over here. And I could have did a case overview, but I really won't bother with that. Over here on the top, we have our bay, our drive bay for a CD drive, I believe. Or if you did water cooling, you could put the water cooling uh, uh, panel here. So this case is very beautiful, and i got to give credit. A lot of fans, a lot of cooling, a lot of uh, dust trap to collect any dust, and nice ventilation all around. So i got to give credit to Corsair, uh, their Obsidian Series 250D. Beautiful case, beautiful build, and uh, yeah. So it took me a second here. So I'm back, and it took me a second here to fi kindly figure out how to get the uh, cardboard box with all the parts inside out of this. But it's very, very cool how they kind of concede, uh, can, uh, conceal the hard drive bay and cool it, where they have this little metal cover over the hard drive bay, and it kind of just pops out with some screws, some thumb screws, and uh, you have access to the hard drive bay, which is really, really cool. And I give props to Corsair again for that. That's awesome. So uh, well, we're going to take this box out real quick. And I'm going to see the contents. What I'm assuming should be in here is the uh, hard drive, uh, the motherboard screws should be in here, hopefully. That's what I'm anticipating. Um, yep, so here are all the screws we have for the computer. And nice, of course, here to give us some zip ties. So they kind of expected us to get some zip ties in there and uh, some smaller screws for some other things. So very, very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, fast forward a little bit later. Now we have the IO shield installed. This was a little bit tricky. Kind of got to bend the pins out a little bit. I think I showed her. Um, I bend those out, kind of click this into place. Kind of tricky. Had some pushback with it on the motherboard, but finally fixed that by clicking it into place. Um, so that's done now. Now we're going to uh, put in the CPU cooler. So I'm going to re angle myself here. Let's uh, look at the cooler. All right. So now we're going to place it accordingly. So we're going to line up the Intel logo with the CPU cooler. And very, very simple to install this. So we're going to we'll unplug it in right as of yet. So how we do this is we just take it, we push it, click. Oh, oh okay. I think that clicked in. That got in, okay. In and in. So now the CPU cooler is installed. We will open up the uh, power supply, I would say would be next. Yeah, let's get really the main bit of it over. This is mostly now just to uh, get you the beginning testing phases of uh, getting everything installed and then seeing if we can get first boot. We have our CX500M power supply. So very nice power supply we have here. Modular, fully, I believe fully modular, if not semi-modular. So there is some uh, papers. Unbox this grand old power. Ooh, I almost think, almost thought for a second fully, but no. I believe we have something semi, um, fully power supply. Uh, fully modular power supplies are pretty expensive. So, if you don't know what modular means, it means that uh, a lot of these parts are not needed. So, a lot of these things have a lot of separate wires connected to them. So, as you can see here, this is a main bunch you can't disconnect. But with a fully modular power supply, you can remove this bunch, but which we can't. But we have four, which will be good. So we connect the main bunch of them, and then we have some um, negotiating when it comes to other wires we need or don't need. So uh, we're going to continue with this, and uh, let's get her inside. All right, so now the uh, power supply has been installed right here. And you got the little flip switch and the uh, uh, brick where we put our uh, connector to plug it into a outlet. Um, so... Um, now we're going to go for first boot. I'm going to be a little bit quiet because my brother's sleeping. But um, first booting. So this is going to be the first boot we're going to do. And I have our uh, Ubuntu 14.04 uh, USB stick um, right here. So we'll plug that into the back port. So I did all of the um, things off camera. I did the uh, I.O. for the front case of the machine. So all the front case is finished. Unfortunately, we have that inception uh, minimize uh, OBS because of that. So we have everything here, everything's worked. I've had to do a little bit more wire management in the sense just to get everything cleaned up and away from the fans so they don't uh, hit the fans eventually. When we move everything, I did some zip tying up here, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit more just to clean everything up, just to get it all uh, compact. Um, the one thing I do, I gotta figure it out, <clears throat> maybe I might even have to um, 
change the uh, the gra the wireless card is because the wireless card is not compatible with this case, unfortunately it seems, and uh, it's kind of loose. So I don't know if I'm going to keep the wireless, which is the TP-Link. Also, another thing about the, uh, let's see if I can find the case right here. Um, the case for the, uh, here, the uh, H81, I mean the motherboard, excuse me. The motherboard um, only comes with two fan connectors. So if you have a case like this case, which has a fan here and another fan here, I only can get this one to go on. So I did boot a little bit before, but this is going to be a real boot into an OS. I did see if it turned on before, obviously, just to make sure like it didn't break or didn't mess up anything. So we'll do it now. So um, I'll turn the case a little bit. Actually, we'll unplug my keyboard out of my computer. We will plug it into uh, the new desktop right here. And uh, push that in. Beautiful new USB 2 port. And we'll turn it on. And another thing about the case, I would also recommend to get a slim uh, disk drive or something much more slim than this as it is kind of protruding. So that's another thing. And here we go. So we're uh, booting into Ubuntu. Hope the lighting's somewhat decent. I'm not really sure. It's kind of midday, about 5 o'clock. <clears throat> so I'm not really sure, but we should uh, boot into Ubuntu. And uh, yeah, it's very nice. So um, yeah, so this build is mostly finished. Um, actually finished, so this will probably be the ending of the video anyway. Uh, so uh, yeah, what do you think about this build? How do you think I did? Uh, would you build something similar? I would probably recommend going for a different motherboard in just the idea that it only has two um, fan connectors, which is kind of annoying, and uh, the, uh, uh, well I guess that's a case issue for the wireless, but I might go for a USB wireless if um, I do find it necessary, and I might anyway because uh, we might see some Hackintosh videos with this um, build because I did look it up, the motherboard again, and there was some Hackintosh information popping up. So I think we might do that as well in a future video, having a Hackintosh installation guide, which would be awesome because I love doing Hackintoshes. Hackintoshes are cool, cool, cool because it's a way to get a, get a Apple computer, get a Mac with half the price. This computer, I believe, uh, I'll, have this, I'll have all the parts in the, des in the description below. But um, I believe this came out to about 580, maybe, maybe a little bit less, maybe 480. Um, got this very, very cheap Intel Core i3 again. Great, I love building PCs, it's fantastic, and uh, yeah. So, that's gonna be it for this video. What do you think about the PC build? Leave it in the comments below, and I will message you back. As always, my name's David Zueras. Please rate, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.